It's always a great day when I get this car, one of my favorites, the Porsche Panamera. This is the Panamera 4S. Many different flavors, they even have a uh, hybrid and an electric version, but we're not getting into that today. This is the 4S. We'll walk through what the big changes are for 2014, and some of them really are quite substantial, and this is one of them that receives a big change, mostly under the hood. Now, there have been some cosmetic changes made to the Panamera for 2014, more to make it palatable to those that really didn't like the styling when it first came out. And it's understandable. It's a very different looking car. Around the front, you'll see that the headlights now have a more swept look. The air openings in the front are bigger. There's more horizontal lines, and I think it looks really quite pleasing. It's around the back where you notice uh, one big difference, and that's the hatch has been made slightly different. They've made the glass longer with a steeper rake, and it's a little bit bigger. The glass itself is actually a little bit bigger and creates a line across the back of the car that frames the two rear taillights. Now, they've also changed the taillights to integrate a little bit better into the back end. So the front and rear, very slight modifications, but it's been done to help get rid of the humpback look and make the car seem a lot longer with a nicer looking silhouette. Now, I am going to have the turbo version of this car with what's called the executive feature, and that's adding 15 centimeters to the wheelbase, so a long wheelbase version of an already very long car. That's the thing about the Panamera. It's low, it's wide, and it's very long, which is one of the reasons why it's not for everybody. One of my favorite parts about this car, styling aside, is the inside. It's class leading in every way. Whenever I get in a high-end car, I always compare it to this, because I really truly believe that the Porsche Panamera is the leader when it comes to interior design finish and really overall look. I think it just looks fantastic. One of the things I love about this car are all the buttons down the middle. With so many car companies going to a controller in the middle of the dash, you still have buttons here. I want to change the heat, I push a button. I want to put on the seat warmer, I want to change the settings for the suspension in this car. It's all done just at a touch of a button. The radio is there if you want to use it, obviously for using your music or your phone, but everything you really need is right here at the touch of a button, like a spine down the middle of the car. Now this design has been so successful that they've taken it and modified it for each Porsche product they have, to the Cayenne, then to the Boxster, and the 911, and so on. Uh, it's all driver-centered. you got the big tack in the middle of the steering wheel here, behind the steering wheel. Now speaking of the steering wheel, this is the Sport 3-spoke steering wheel. The regular steering wheel comes with the multi-function buttons for things like turning up the radio and changing the buttons. As good as this one looks, I would probably get the multi-function steering wheel because I like to be able to just change the the radio without moving my hands off the wheel. You have to use the touch screen here. Cup holders. The cup holders are awful in this car. You've got one big one in the center here, but it's got no support for whatever you've got in there, a coffee or a water bottle that flops around. There's one here that comes out of uh, the dashboard like the 911. But the problem with that is if it's a coffee, it's right over top of all the expensive stuff below it. So you kind of worry about spilling there. They could improve that. Back seat. It's designed for somebody that's six foot four to sit back there comfortably, and there is a ton of room, but there is only two seats in the back. Yes, this is a two plus two, four seater, four wheel drive sports car, but if you have a family and you've got kids and you wanna use it for taking kids to soccer and things like that, you can't put a third kid in the back seat, which really is limiting for family. So this truly is an executive car for someone driving it to work, taking clients out, or as a second vehicle, because you'd have a Porsche Cayenne to do soccer duty, wouldn't you? But overall, fantastic. As I mentioned off the beginning, I am gonna have a another review of the Panamera Turbo, and that's gonna have the Executive Edition, which gives you 15 more centimeters of legroom in the back, like flying business class. So that's gonna be in a future review, so keep an eye out for that. Now, before I get going and talk to you about the new engine and everything that's in this new Panamera 4S, I wanna talk about one main pet peeve of mine. Uh, we have a Porsche Cayenne uh, as our family vehicle. We love it. It's got the three seats in the back, gotta have that with kids. And one of the things that I love about it are the big side mirrors. This car has very small side mirrors in keeping with the sports cars. But when you park such a long car, it's really quite tricky to parallel park and the mirror doesn't even tilt down all the way to see the curb and you can scratch the wheels quite easily. I wish they made the mirrors a little bit bigger with more of a tilt feature. The other thing, when you put it into gear at low speeds and you turn, you can feel the wheels you know, twitching and squirming around. It's like 
If you've ever driven a pickup truck that has a 4x4 system where the 4x4 system binds up, it's very similar to that. So at low speeds, this car squirms and squirts around underneath you. You really notice it in underground parking lots, especially if you've got wet wheels. So that's something that's very different from, say, an S-Class. You would never have any of that with an S-Class. But the reason is, a big part of it is they have quite a bit of an aggressive camber in the front of this car for cornering ability and making it feel uh, the way it does, which is a fantastic road machine. Okay, so here's the way it sits now with the engines. The base Panamera and Panamera 4 comes with a 3.6 liter V6. Horsepower is bumped from 300 to 310 horsepower. That's a nice improvement. Then what they've done is they've taken that 3.6 liter and made a smaller displacement engine, three liters. Put two turbos, by turbo on this engine and it pumps the horsepower up to 420 horsepower. So the old V8 with a 4.8 liter V8 had 400 horsepower. This now has 420 horsepower. That's 15 foot-pounds more torque than the outgoing motor and is 18% more efficient. So that sounds like a win-win-win. In addition, the car is lighter, which makes it more dynamic in the corners. Still has a 7-speed PDK transmission, which can be lightning quick. It has regular setting and then Sport and Sport Plus. You have the active suspension system. And I find that if you just put it into drive and drive, it's a bit too soft for my taste. And I really don't find the transmission that lively. It starts out in second gear. And so what I do is I put it in Sport. That keeps the revs a little longer in between gear changes, firms up the suspension one notch. You can take it a little higher and go to Sport Plus, but the reality is other than warm, dry summer weather, that's not going to be encouraged because it opens up the parameters of the stability and traction control. So this car really is for somebody that likes the performance and the handling of a Porsche, needs an extra two seats and likes a big, luxurious executive car. It's long, it's low, it's wide. It's not the easiest thing to parallel park. It can be a little bit quirky at low speeds, especially when you hear those tires chirping with the uh, all-wheel drive system kind of binding up. But I gotta tell you, I would love to have this car. I just love the way it drives. It is spectacular out on the open road, and it would be one of my top choices for a long cross-country road trip. It can be just as much fun as any smaller sports car. Now the Porsche Panamera is not for everybody. This is not an S-Class Mercedes, a 7 Series from BMW or an Audi A8. It's a very different car. It really is through and through a Porsche sports car but with four doors and the capacity to take four passengers. I like the fact that Porsche continues to offer the V8 version of this car in the GTS trim. A lot of people are going to get this new twin turbo V6 version and not even know, other than the sound, that there's something different at play here. It's still one of my favorite cars. It has a few quirks, but I would love to have one of these. It's not a cheap proposition. Starts at 90,000 for a base Panamera, 95 roughly for a Panamera 4. If you want a Panamera S, that's the two wheel. It's about $106,000 and the 4S 112. That's the base. You wanna get features? This one's $135,000. So it's for the rich and it's a wonderful car. I'd love to have one of these to drive to work every day.